everyone. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you all. Some folks, lots of lots of familiar faces and some folks who have never been on one of these calls, McKay and Natalie, I think I think this is the first time, although there've been so many folks in the gatherings, Natalie, maybe you have been on one of those calls and I just haven't had you on my home screen. Okay, great, yeah, sweet, yay. Well, thanks so much for coming everyone and I'm excited to be launching into the next exciting offering from Buckskin Revolution, which of course is the spring gathering. So the folks who were invited to this call tonight are anyone who's participated in any of the courses so far. So either the spring gathering that was the first ever that happened last, started last June, or the fall gathering, or the Buckskin class, the Buckskin Sewing 101 that's just wrapping up, or the Connection is a Survival Skill class, or any of my Patreon members. So a lot of you are coming, you know, from, from different events with me. So might have, you know, a different lens on what I've been offering so far. Um, so usually these calls tend to have people trickle in a bit for the first five to 10 minutes. We had 40 something people registered for the call and we're, we're not that many yet. So probably there'll be people popping in for a little while. Um, so I wanna go ahead and start by asking everyone to introduce themselves using their, using their name tile on your little, on your little photo on, on Zoom. And for those of you who have been on the calls, this is gonna be old hat, but if you haven't before, the way we'd like to do that is um, go ahead and change your name on the screen. So to do that, you're gonna click the participants button and then it's gonna bring up a list of participants and your name should be at the top. And then you're gonna hover over your name and it's gonna give you a blue button that's an option for more. And then it'll give you a button to rename yourself. And so what we normally do is we take our last names off because that's a little more formal than we're going for. And then we invite people to share your personal pronoun choice because there are often folks on the calls and in the world who we can't actually assume that we know what pronoun they like to use just by what they look like. And so we ask you just to, just to let us know. And so I use she, her pronouns. I identify as a woman, so I'm gonna put that there. And then uh, where you're calling from. So right now I am calling from Reno, Nevada. I'm staying with my sweetheart who has really nice Wi-Fi. So it's great for these calls. <laughs> and I just learned from Alice this morning as we were clipping Willow that it is Washoe territory. And I should have known that, but I didn't yet. So the native people of this area are the Washoe. So I'm gonna put that in here. And it's okay if you don't know the answers to these questions, it's kind of to invite an inquiry process and get us thinking about it and learning more about the place that we live and the indigenous peoples of that area. So, and we've got more people trickling in, which is lovely. And if you have, if you're not sure how to do what I just described, you can also raise your hand and we can um, talk about it in the, in the chat. So I want to go ahead and introduce uh, some of the Buckskin Revolution team. This gathering is going to be a new concept, kind of a new framework than we've done before, and that I'm going to have more support from folks who've already been engaged with the classes and gatherings, and they're going to be serving as peer mentors for the gathering. So it's going to be super exciting, and the whole idea is to get more engagement. So it's not just, you know, a bunch of talking heads and me talking to on a screen, but to really have people feel like they're meeting folks on an individual basis and like you have more community and connection within the course, within the gathering. And that's part of what makes it a gathering as opposed to just classes, right? It's the personal connection. And as most of us know, that is really the way to take the learning deeper because with just our learning and just us taking stuff in, we might have some questions, some comments, some ideas and inspirations, but we're less likely to follow through on things than if we are being held accountable and we're being witnessed by people. And also we learn so much more when we witness the learning journey of other people and see their projects and their questions and the things they're doing and the mistakes they're making and their successes and all of those things. So it really takes the learning and just multiplies it many fold by what I could possibly give you just from myself. So that is a new thing with the spring gathering. So the idea of this call is to introduce you to what the spring gathering is gonna look like. 
and then give an opportunity to hear from some of the people who've been a part of the other gatherings and from some of the folks who are going to be as serving as peer mentors for this gathering and then give you a chance to ask whatever questions you might have let you know um, what it's all going to look like and and you know we're it's still a work in process because this is a new framework so ask your questions and hopefully I'll be able to give you good answers. Mandy and I were talking earlier and she had some good questions that I was like, that is an excellent question and I am going to work on getting an answer for it. Um, <laughs> so that might be the case. And then also um, we have one member of our support team who's not on the call tonight and I was thinking she was going to be and was going to be bringing the link. So I'm gonna need to uh, pop out for a moment and find the link to the gathering so I can put that in the chat <laughs> at some point on this call. So I'll probably do that while the mentors are sharing and introducing themselves. So does that sound like a good, a good system for this call that works for everybody? All right, great. And just to give you guys a little bit of logistics on how these calls work is right now we can mostly see everyone on, on your screen. So if you have a question or a comment, the two ways to get my attention are either to, well, three ways I should say. You can raise your hand and then I'm I'm gonna hopefully see that. And then Mitch is my support in facilitating these meetings. So she is gonna be keeping an eye on the hands raised. And then you also have the option to raise a virtual hand. So that if you go down to the bottom of your screen, and I'm sorry, I'm on a computer, so I'm not sure how it works on phones, but at the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions button. And if you push that, it allows you to raise your hand. So you can raise your flesh hand or your virtual hand, or you can put a question in the chat. And Mitch is going to be keeping her eyes on the chat. So those are ways to get my attention. I will say, though, that it'd be great if you could hold your questions till the end of the call, because it's likely that I will be addressing a lot of them in the beginning. It's just going to be more efficient if we kind of batch all of the questions. Does that make sense? Sweet. Great. Thank you. A quick note, I will still be here, even if you don't see me, um, but I have eye issues, so I'll be with my camera off a lot of the time so that I can carefully read the chat. But I'm right here, so I will hopefully see your hand and we'll hopefully see your chat. Great. Well, we are, we are 10 minutes after the hour, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch into introducing the gathering and sharing about it. So the, the way these gatherings started was it was the start of COVID and I had a busy teaching schedule set up for all spring and summer. I was going to be traveling all around the West Coast and then to Europe teaching. And then, of course, COVID hits and my entire schedule collapsed right at the time when the world was panicking and suddenly realizing, oh, my gosh, everything is falling apart and I don't have the basic skills that I need to tend to my own needs. And now that I'm realizing that, there's also no way for me to get them because I can't travel around and go to the places where I might have access to them. So my idea was to, you know, to help to allay some of the, the fear and the panic that I was seeing a lot of people have based on not having a basic foundation in a lot of these skills. That said, it really isn't just about the physical skills, but the ways being more deeply engaged with those skills and connection practices and being feeling like we're more a part of the world around us, what that does to us on a visceral and a nervous system level. So just as much about ways to feel more connected and more grounded and more whole and healthy within ourselves, as opposed to completely dependent on a system that suddenly looks less stable than we had counted on, is part of the intention for the gathering. So it was just going to be a one-time event because of COVID, but the response and several of the folks here on the call, Neil and Mitch and Alice were, and Karen, was. you were in the first gathering too, right? So yeah, a lot of these folks here were in the first gathering and the, the response and the ways that I saw it affect and change people was tremendous. And the feedback was so amazing that I realized this isn't just for COVID. This is important, you know, from here on into the future because I can only get around and teach so many people in person physically 
And there are only so many people that can take, you know, take time off from their work or whatever it is that's important to them and have the funds to be able to get to a place or even know about events where they could learn these things in person. So this is a way for me to reach so many more people and spread not just the skills and knowledge, but the sense of connection and community that comes with it. So the BROGS, Buckskin Revolution Online Gatherings were born, and this is going to be the third one. And it's been a huge learning curve. So definitely every iteration we've, we've incorporated a lot of feedback, we've shifted things a lot. And I think that this one is just going to be the best one ever because we've learned so much. We have, we have a lot more people who are deeply engaged we can start to lean on and it's actually really becoming more of the community that I envisioned. Whereas the first one was just me making it all up as I went along no idea what I was doing technologically. The people <laughs> who were in the first one, people are going to be laughing because like so many technology crashes and I was just kind of a panicked wreck a lot <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. It was all on YouTube and emails and logistics and whew, it was a lot. So the technological things are out of my realm of experience, but I've been learning a lot. But certainly now we have the community that I was hoping these things would build. And so it's really gratifying and really exciting. Um, so that was the intention. And then the idea is that these are gatherings as opposed to courses, because they're really about kind of a broad swath of skills as opposed to a deep dive into one skill in particular. So the vision for the Buckskin Revolution Academy is eventually to have master's courses that are going to be, you know, full immersions into, into skills in a really detailed way. Thus far, I only have two short courses and then the three gatherings. None of them are, you know, super, super in depth. They're more kind of introductory. But the thing with the gathering is it's giving you a broad range and introduction to a lot of the skills that are going to help you feel more connected and learn more about the natural world that are going to help you think about food and how that relates to health and wellness and ancestral skills in terms of what it is to be living as a person who knows that they can meet their basic needs from the natural world around them as opposed to dependent on industry and technology and a global economy. Um, and, you know, th these, this particular gathering is gonna be organized different than some of the others in that rather than just throwing out a you know, hodgepodge of different skills every week with a weekly theme, we're asking people to choose a particular area of focus and therefore you can build on your learning every week and you won't feel completely overwhelmed like you have to learn all of these different things and particularly if they are subjects that you're not as interested in. So, you know, we've had vegetarians in the class who are like, what do I do with a whole week on hide tanning and animal processing? And some of them have decided that they want to engage in that anyway, like Shannon Wolfenbarger. Um, but, you know, so, so that folks have the capacity to focus on one track and there, none of the tracks are exclusive. So you can participate in all of them if you'd like, but we wanted to build into it a system so that people don't feel completely overwhelmed by the breadth of things that I cover. Cause that has been the biggest feedback from all of these gatherings is this is so great, this is amazing. And oh my God, how do I possibly take in all of the things you're giving? So you no longer have to. <laughs> you can now choose an area of focus and just stick with that. Or if you want, to let yourself get completely overwhelmed. Hey, that's an option too. <laughs> um, so that said, let me just look at my notes here. Um, the way it's gonna look is every week, there will be classes released in every track. And we're gonna have several options for interactive Zoom calls. There'll be some that are the whole group, but the problem with those is sometimes we have so many people, there's three screens full, you don't really get to see everyone who's on the call. There's no way for everyone in the call to share and people can feel a little lost in the crowd. So now we'll be having a few all group Zoom calls so you get to see the whole community and make connections there. But then you'll also have small group calls within your tracks. And how small those are depends on how many folks, you know, with what interests are in the gathering. But it's going to make it a little bit more manageable and a little bit easier to make real personal connections within those groups than it was on the big calls. Um, so, so there'll be 
six weeks of the gathering and six small group calls. And I'm going to be alternating which groups I'm on calls for every week. So I'll be on some of the small group calls, but not all of them, which is also kind of nice because it's a different energy when it's all students and peers, as opposed to when I'm on the calls. So it, it means that you get some of each. Um, and then again, you'll have peer mentors who are people who have been in the gathering before. And, you know, the idea of the mentors isn't that they're experts in this field necessarily, although some of them will be. Alice is an amazing expert, more so than myself in a lot of these skills. But the idea is just that they are folks who have some experience and also are kind of like a liaison between that group and myself and so can field questions that are more appropriate for me to me directly so that I have, you know, kind of more eyes and ears out there and my energy can go further in terms of engaging with those things that really need my support as opposed to questions that someone who's taken the classes a few times before will be able to, to answer. So that makes sense to folks. So I'm super excited to see how it's going to work. And before I do more yakking at you all, I would love to open it up to some folks who have been in the past gatherings to just share some of their experience and some of why the gatherings have been, um, why, why they're here at the call, why you feel engaged and interested in carrying on in the gatherings. And then we'll take a little, a little intermission while I grab the link for you guys. Um, and then we'll hear about the tracks more specifically, and I'll introduce some of the Buckskin Revolution team and the, the track peer, peer mentors and such. So if anyone would like to share, and you don't have to, but you can raise your virtual hand, raise your flesh hand, or put a note in the chat saying you'd like to share or saying what you want to share specifically, and then, and then we can read that off. And maybe everyone's too nervous or. <laughs> okay, I'll jump in. But people, this doesn't, this wasn't prepared ahead. Like people weren't primed ahead to speak. So um, neither was I. <laughs> so, um, so, wow, I don't even honestly know where I would start. Like um, I went to the spring gathering because I was so excited to find somebody teaching these kinds of skills online, which normally I wouldn't have even looked for, but again, um, all kinds of things were making it so I couldn't travel in addition to COVID. And um, so, and then, so I was excited about that. And then for me, honestly, like my staying and doing every gathering and every class so far has been um, really just falling so in love with being able to learn so much and connect with so many like-minded people while I still can't travel. And I can't travel for a couple of reasons, COVID not COVID only being one factor, um, but I have other things that are uh, making this not time when I can travel. And wow, it's just been so precious and I'm so excited. And even my old plan of that I would travel to learn is kind of paling. I still want to, I still want to, learn in person like that uh, that would be the best for me for sure but I love learning I can learn all the time like I don't have to stop it can be 365 days a year and that just thrills me beyond belief and I love learning from Monia but I've already talked a lot so I'll let somebody else talk about that if they choose or if there's more time I'll come back to that piece of the puzzle for me yay thank you Mitch uh, Becca, I see your hand raised there. If you'd like to unmute, yep. thank you. I'm happy to share. Um, so I did the fall brog and then the buckskin sewing class. And I think the biggest thing for me on, on both those fronts was being introduced, not, not so much introduced to new things, but cause like I knew those things existed, but having a new understanding that I was capable of learning these things. I'd always been very intimidated by like plant medicine. I'd done lots of foraging and cooking, but plant medicine felt like, wow, that's like alchemy. Like <laughs> it felt crazy. So it was awesome to understand that I could learn that. And then the same with buckskin sewing. Like I've never sewed a single thing in my life, but 
suddenly having my hands on thong and buckskin and all, I was like, not only can I do this, but this is really fun. And so that was very eye opening for me. Um, and then the community is just like the icing on the whole thing. This past year, like I really stepped away from social media. It just became for me a place that that wasn't positive and I didn't want to be spending my day around negative energy and having this community instead, like seeing that people are creating and learning and cheering each other on and having these experiences for me meant a lot, you know, even to just lurk and read what people are up to added a positive element to the day instead of taking away from my day. So I've, I've very much appreciated that. Wonderful. Thank you. And I had seen Mandy, I had seen your hand up for a second. I didn't know if you still wanted to share. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it definitely is an interesting um, COVID thing being cut off from a lot of connections. Um, I was also in my own personal transition and, and lost a lot of connections, but but really like um, I dabble and do a lot of things. I sit out in nature a lot and I observe the birds and I try to knit and try to sew and do all these things, but I learn through others sharing through their learning. I get stuck, I hit walls. And so for me, I was so hungry to connect with other people and to just have a conversation about what we were working with, what we're learning about. And that's where it's like, mm, that's, that's the, that's the real cream of the cream, however you say that, creme, whatever. <laughs> um, so, and it was awesome to, I, I loved all the videos, even though there was so much information and, and Monia, you're like, you got to fit it all in. But of course it could be like a month on any one thing. And still, of course, there'd be more things. I loved it. I just, it, it was some, it was like a, a good pulse for me. So I'm excited to see how this new uh, way of connecting around it um, with the different tracks is going to unfold. And I just look forward to meeting people again. I, it, it's been good. So thank you for everything you've put together. Yeah. Yay. Excellent. Thank you all. I feel like we're kind of preaching to the choir here because almost everybody who's in this group has already experienced it. <laughs> But that, that was the idea, right? That this is kind of the, the orientation for those who already have been a part in some way of what I'm doing with Buckskin Revolution and kind of giving you the giving you the scoop at the outset about how this one is gonna look a little bit different um, and also inviting you to register early. So part, you probably noticed that I was typing at the first part of Mitch's share, that was me grabbing the link. So I am gonna go ahead and share that now. So that link will get you to the site. And then also I'm gonna send, I'll be uploading this video to YouTube and I'm going to be sending everyone who's registered for this call the video uplink. It's also going to be on the community circle. Um, and so the and then that link is also going to go out in the email to everyone who's on this call. So you don't have to write it now or like click on it now. Just just so you know, sometimes the chats can be a little bit distracting. Um, so excellent. Thank you so much. So I want to go ahead and introduce the tracks that are going to be part of this gathering because there's so much to cover. And at this point, this being the third one, there's been a bunch of classes for the spring last year, the first ever Brog, and then a bunch that were the fall. And there is going to be a lot of repeat from those, but there's also going to be a lot of new content. And one of the things that I've heard over and over from a lot of folks is that the chance to watch this stuff again and engage more deeply also is something that's really appealing. So I just want to really emphasize that if some of the information is stuff that you've already seen, rather than it being an excuse to check out, you can use it as an excuse to go that much more deeper and integrate the learning a lot more. I know a thing that happens for me is if I'm studying something that's a completely new subject and it's just absolutely fresh to me, a lot of the stuff doesn't even land at all. It's just too much to take in. But if it's something that I know a little bit about, then I already have a framework and then I'm able to plug in those more bits of information in a way that I actually retain them and I'm able to move forward with them as opposed to just like, ah, and, and not able to place it all. 
So that's definitely going to be true about this gathering. And some of the tracks are going to have more repeat than others. And that's just kind of the nature of it too, because for example, the wilderness living and survival skills track, a lot of those are some kind of like basic concepts that are really important. And a lot of that I've covered in the other gatherings, but I think a lot of the people who are going to be coming in for that track are people who aren't necessarily haven't necessarily been in the gatherings, um, particularly because an article about the fall gathering came out in The Guardian, which is a huge publication, and a lot of people got interested in, in my classes because of that. And the way that it was kind of billed in The Guardian was as kind of like a survival course, which it totally isn't exactly. All of these skills can be applied to survival, but I never have described myself as a survival instructor. I think it's great that these skills are applicable to survival and I've I've used them in those situations and it's, you know, like they are survival skills, but I uh, I try to distance myself from the from the survivalist mentality and world because I feel like it's totally counter to the types of connection and belonging that I'm going for in the gatherings and also a lot of the survival mentality is ironically counter to your survival in an emergency situation because it's very panic and fear based and very antagonistic like the world is out to get me and it's my job to survive the world and what we're going for in these gatherings is something polar opposite to that. Um, so, <laughs> thanks. Um, so that said, one of the tracks is wilderness living and survival skills. And I emphasize wilderness living first because yes, they will help you survive, but they're really more about thriving and being comfortable and tending to your needs when you're in a wilderness situation. That's not gonna be applicable for everybody, right? Those are skills that, that it's nice to have in your back pocket, but you may or may not ever use them. And then we have kind of the polar opposite track, which is the more the homesteading and sustainable foods track, which is about using these skills as often as you can in your daily life and having them be about the way you relate to your needs and the environment around you in a way that's about, it's about belonging and it's about empowerment and using your own hands and understanding the natural resources in your area and lessening your dependence on, you know, on industrial goods and goods that are shipped from halfway around the world and that kind of thing. So I would say that those kind of, those two tracks kind of balance the equation on either, either side. And then we have a nature connection track. So I'm calling that awareness with a focus on plants and birds and nature connection practices. And so this track, I guess I should back up and say that None of these tracks are mutually exclusive. They're all actually interrelated and there's a lot of overlap between all of them. Every single skill in this gathering could fall under nature connection and ancestral skills. But for the sake of giving people things to focus on and not overwhelming everyone with everything, I've separated them into specific focuses. So the awareness track is about not just, you know, what we what we need to live or particular skills, but it's about how to engage more deeply in with the natural world in a way that turns on some of our senses that the modern human life allows us to kind of let lapse, right? So things like tuning our ears to what the birds are saying, by which I don't mean, oh, that's a robin song and oh, that's a finch, that can be part of it too, but oh, those birds are suddenly quiet. There is something going on what is it? And you might see a coyote running along your fence line. So tuning your senses in a way that you are engaged with what's happening in the world, because that's how your senses evolved, right? Your ancestors being tuned in to what was happening in the world meant that they were going to be seeing what resources were around them, seeing what dangers were around them, more likely to make it to the next generation and pass on their genes. So I'm always telling folks that these are not, you know, skills to go out into the woods and be a badass. These are skills that you evolved to have and that are the birthright of every human alive because we wouldn't be here if our ancestors didn't know how to do all of this. At that and it's in us too. So nature connection, awareness, birds and plants, these are about your gateways to find that sense of connection and being part of the natural world wherever you are. 
And I focus on birds and plants because those are things that are available all over the place, right? Every city has vacant lots and city parks and birds nesting on high rises. So while the awareness track can cover a lot of other types of creatures, plants and birds are beautiful gateways. Oh, hi, welcome Henrietta, nice you made it. Um, they're nice gateways to find that sense of connection and then that can be applied to all else. So there's gonna be some basic botany and learning to identify plants and learning to be more keyed into the birds as well as other practices just to help us bring some of those awarenesses into our everyday life. Um, <laughs> I, I see that, Shannon. Also true that it also helps in, in the badass regard. Um, <laughs> um, and then the other track is ancestral skills and handcrafts. So using our hands, right, our ability to make and do and craft is part of what, what makes us human. And so, again, all of these skills could be considered ancestral skills, but, but there's more of a focus in kind of the making and doing the things that aren't just about basic survival, but things that we can incorporate into our daily lives, our clothing, our shelters, our food, the containers we put things in. So more handcrafts and making things in the ways that humans evolved to and using these amazing appendages that are so unique to humans and connecting with what it is to be living in a more ancestral way, even as modern humans. So kind of integrating these skills and some of the kind of life ways and philosophies, as well as just the crafts themselves, right? There's a reason why we're considering the crafts and the ancestral skills together, because some of these crafts represent that, that greater philosophy and way of connecting, but we don't want to separate them out, if that makes sense. So that said, and we don't have all of the peer mentors in this call, but we have a lot of them. So I want to introduce some of the Buckskin Revolution team. And a lot of you have been involved with the other gatherings, so you already know one another. But Mitch, um, if you'd like to, I know you already kind of introduced yourself, but Mitch has become a backbone of the Buckskin Revolution gatherings in terms of helping to keep an eye on what's happening in the community chat and helping me facilitate these meetings and just being more involved as, as time goes on. Um, and we just met through the spring gathering. So she's a wonderful example of someone who's so gung-ho and wants to plug in. So if you'd just introduce yourself briefly, Mitch, that would be lovely and share kind of what your role is in all of this. All right, well, you actually sort of shared already what my role is, but you know hello should. everyone. I'm living in Belfast, Maine, which is on the coast about two hours north of Portland, Maine. And a beautiful place if you want to come visit and um, the traditional land of the Wabanaki people. And I want to learn more about that. Um, and I'm grateful that I had the prompting back in the spring to learn who the people were here. I had a feeling it was the Wabanaki and the, which is a bigger umbrella that had other tribes, you know, falling under that umbrella, like the Penobscot, which I also knew were in this area. But anyway, so much, so much, so many things I want to learn. And, um, Yes, as Wania mentioned, I um, often help out, well, actually always nowadays, <laughs> always help out with the calls, with um, trying to keep an eye on who might have their hands raised, trying to keep an eye on the chat. And um, I definitely don't do a perfect job of it. So certainly like if you see someone with their hand up and I don't seem to be seeing them, you're welcome to like, you know, throw something in the note, like, hey, so-and-so has their hand up or whatever, especially with my eyes situation. It's kind of a funny job for me, but um, but I love it. So as long as it doesn't bother you guys too much that I'll have my camera off so I can peer closely at the screen. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks. Yay, thank you, Mitch. So I'm going to introduce Tatiana who isn't here, but just let you know about Tatiana, who is someone who reached out to me uh, this summer from having, having seen me on alone and really connecting with my philosophy and the way I go about things and then starting to follow me on my website and YouTube and reached out saying, hey, I'm, I'm a business coach. Like, I'd love to offer you my services just to kind of help you get your thing going because I see you could use some support. Um, and so we started working together. And then once I decided to keep going with the gatherings, brought her in as kind of tech support and 
everything in in the background support for me in these gatherings. So she she isn't necessarily on you know on the Buckskin Revolution team all the time. It's only when I have the the courses going. Um, but she's been absolutely invaluable, and she is the reason why we have the new format and why we don't have the kinds of logistical nightmares that I had the first time I tried to do the gathering doing it all myself. So her her insights and help have been really absolutely monumental. And she's the one who came up with the tracks idea because she sees how overwhelmed the students become and how overwhelmed I am trying to offer everything everyone could need to learn all at once. Um, so very helpful. And you will definitely be meeting her if you participate in the gathering. She's often on our calls. Um, so she is uh, behind the scenes and sometimes in front of the of the scenes in the calls um, person on the Buckskin Revolution team. Um, and then I would love to introduce Shannon Wolfenbarger, who is going to be kind of a, a liaison and community support person as well. Um, and I reached out to Shannon because she has been just such an incredibly enthusiastic participant in all things Buckskin Revolution and just so on board with what I'm doing and has gone through a radical transformation with these skills. So I'd love for her to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. My name is Shannon Wolfenbarger, and it's pronounced and said wolf goes in the barger, just in case you ever want to know that. Not that it matters, but there it is. Um, so I really am a true novice, true um, basic I mean, I walked into this with zero skills, zero. I'm a vegan, I'm eating my vegan nachos as it speak, as we speak. And uh, I have learned so much. And as Monaya says, I have transitioned um, to actually picking up a deer off the road and processing it, taking the hide. And as a lot of you know already, but um, you know, and I haven't processed the hide. I have the hide, it's in my freezer. I'm waiting for the temperatures to warm up a little bit it is 66 today but it's going to be 20 again next week so it's just going to sit there until spring it's fine but i have a lot of meat and bones and hide in my freezer and so at some point i will get started on that but i really am all right so i watched alone i watched you know five seasons of it it was fine you know it was great whatever but well then when i got to season six and there's this petite little blonde girl out there, gray blonde, you know, kind of like the rest of us. But we, um, I just looked at her and I'm like, who is this woman? I mean, the guys were complaining and moaning and groaning. And here she is like, isn't this beautiful? And I'm like, oh my God, who is this woman? And so I found her online and I sent her an email. And then I've been with her ever since. And so really Wonaya has taken me from, you know, this truly a place of knowing absolutely nothing to really progressing into, maybe I'll never eat the deer, maybe, I probably will have at least a bite of it, and maybe I'll never do much with anything else. But I feel so strongly about what these skills represent. So for me as a single woman, who lives out in the middle of a pine, the Pine Ridge Reservation where I am 100% alone 99% of the time, I feel like these skills are important for me, for my basic survival, for my long-term survival, all of it. I mean, it's just kind of this huge process of getting to know who I am as a woman. And I've also started doing solo car camping, which has been big for me because I've been afraid of everything in my life. And when I look at Wonaya and I look at how easy she made it look, even though I know it wasn't easy being on alone, but she really made it look like anybody can do this. Like you can do this. I can do this. We can all do this if we just learn these basic skills. And so I will shut up and that is why I'm here. And hopefully I can add to your experience as well. So thank you so much for including me. <laughs> it truly has melted my heart. Yay. <laughs> And part of why it feels important to include Shannon too in the leadership team is just is that right that like representing that you can come from no skill base and afraid of a lot of this stuff and really launch in and have it transform your life and I just think it's so beautiful so I always love um, highlighting Shannon and her experience and that it is possible and we're all capable of it. So yeah, thank you. 
Um, so, uh, in contrast with Shannon starting from nowhere, Alice, I met at my first ever skills gathering in 1995. So when I first got started, Alice had already been there teaching for a long time. <laughs> there actually, there hadn't been that many rabbit sticks at that time. So not as long a time as it's been since then. But um, so Alice is just an incredible resource for this community and has taken on already being a, a mentor big time through the gatherings and helping students with all kinds of skills. And, um, and so she was a no brainer to invite to be one of the peer mentors for the ancestral, well, the peer mentor for the ancestral skills and handcrafts track. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, Alice. Hi guys, yep. And, um, but there was a time when Nia, when I was like Shannon, I said, oh, I'd like to learn like one or two of these things and try it out. And then since then stuff happens and people happen and you're eating pack rat and you know, what? Anyhow, so one thing does lead to another and a fair warning, this is gonna mess you up in a really good way, your whole life. So I came for the skills and I found a family and it's been decades and I'm thrilled when our family grows and we have more and more people and I'm making notes. I'm going, oh, maybe if I, if I go to Idaho first early, it's really close to go to South Dakota. And then what about, you know, Alberta, you know, so you, I, I can go freeload on anybody in all 50 states and most of the Canadian provinces. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's all these lovely people. And you're right, this is really positive. Um, it saved me for this whole year participating with all this stuff. And it's an honor and a pleasure to uh, be able to help in any way with Wonia, who I agree with all of you guys, is an amazing teacher, although it's like having a fire hose coming at you, right? So, <laughs> excellent. Onward. Onward. That onward has become a theme, and that came from came from Alice. <laughs> and it's true. The one the one thing that I have to watch myself is not to just like explode too much information in any one call, because <laughs> I can I can really take questions and run with them. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so I'd love to introduce Mandy Lee, who I have known for a very long time. Our our paths have paralleled in all of these ways. We are both living in the Columbia River, River Gorge. I on the Oregon side and her on the Washington side, but way back when. Um, so yeah, and she was very, very active with the birds, plants, and nature connection track last, well, it wasn't even a track, but but kind of focus group. So I invited Mandy Lee to be the peer mentor for this gathering, and I'd love for you to introduce yourself, Mandy Lee. Hi, thank you so much. Yeah, it's really an honor. It's exciting. Thank you for asking me. Um, I, you know, I sit outside a lot, and I see a lot of things, and I'm really, you know, I'm just curious, and I like to play, and, and, uh, and, and I want to, I want to just share that with others. Um, so I'm really excited to be in this group. I love the earth. I love the plants. I love listening to the birds. They call me outside often when I'm kind of inside, maybe even on the phone or doing something I sh would really rather not be doing, but in the rut. And then all of a sudden I'll hear something and then I'll just go outside. So, um, super excited to share that, um, in a group and, really loving what everyone else was saying. Uh, it's really about the community and having others to, to do and, and share story with. And we will learn a lot with each other through our stories. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mandy Lee. Um, and then our final mentor who's on this call is Becca, who, you know, likewise was always posting about a project that she had taken on and often one of the first people to take one of the, the themes in the different classes and, and 
apply it and share with their group what she was up to. Um, and I know that that like home learning more of the homestead skills um, in the place that she is has been a big focus for her. Um, so I wanted to bring her in as the mentor for the homesteading and sustainable foods group. And I know there's it's unfortunate there's there's crossover because I know that the plant medicines have been big and those have been put into the plants as a way to connect with the plants. So again, so much overlap. We have to draw a line somewhere, but but also a lot of work with plant medicines. So you would, I probably am doing too much introduction. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So like Winnie has said, when I started the fall brog, uh, my husband and I had just purchased 40 acres in the Mojave Desert where we still are right now. We've been actually living in an RV since 2017 and literally driving in circles around the country. And one of the things I've loved is every time we get somewhere, um, I'm like, okay, I got to learn the birds. I got to learn the plants. I got to learn the history here and the, you know, the native foods and the, you know, the cultures and everything. And so that's been really fascinating. Um, but I'd never like really tried to learn such a harsh area as the Mojave. So it was great timing to, to be taking the class and to be trying to find the things on our property. Um, in the past, uh, my husband and I, we lived on the Olympic Peninsula and had what I refer to as an urban homestead. We had animals and did a lot of foraging and hunting and trapping actually. Um, then we lived in North Idaho and built an off-grid cabin and um, I really related to what you said, Winnie, there were obviously survivalists there. And someone asked me one time if I was a survivalist and I said, no, they're running from things. We're running to things. Like we were running to Idaho. Um, so that to me is the kind of the mentality, but um, I am just a lifelong DIYer. I love to, you know, learn to bake bread, learn to make beer, learn to ferment, learn to just you know, do all the things. And uh, so I'm excited to continue learning and then also to um, help other be other people be excited and learn too. Yay. Wonderful. Thank you. And and that that brought to mind too another amazing thing about this gathering is it isn't just about the classes that are offered. It's about the interactions with all of these people who you might have, you know, a passion for something that's not remotely covered in the gathering, but chances are good there's going to be someone else in the community who has played with some of those things. And so you can post questions about that. And this is about bringing people together. And Tatiana, I've been working on the landing page, you know, the, the website for this. And one of the things Things that we have is this gathering is for you if and one of the things I have on there is if you really want to know that you're not the only weirdo out there into this stuff because so many of us feel so isolated being interested in things that society tells us are no longer relevant or aren't important and one of the beautiful things about the pandemic is a lot of people realized oh actually it is still relevant and really important and I don't know anything about it so I really feel like, you know, obviously there have been all kinds of unfortunate things and all kinds of tragedies associated with the pandemic, but I really hope that, you know, as things shift and, and the shutdowns lessen and there's less of the virus affecting people, that we get to retain some of the beautiful gifts of it, which has been, wow, human connection is really important and we really feel it when we don't get to have it. So let's try to remember and really cultivate those connections because when it all comes down, that's one of the things that is that people miss the most when they lose out on. It's not necessarily, you know, how much toilet paper you've got or how much food you've got, but it's it's necessary for human life to feel connected to other humans. We're we're pack animals. That's how we evolved. So I hope that that is retained. And then also why these skills matter and the fact that we live in this kind of constructed reality that has us think that knowing how to tend to our basic needs isn't important, but you never know what's around the corner, right? This time it was a pandemic. It could be a hurricane. It could be a volcano. It could be, you know, <laughs> nuclear issues. It could be any of a million different things. And these skills are relevant to all of those because these are the skills that were relevant before all of this modern stuff existed. So this is about connecting with other people who recognize that and being resources for one another. And as Alice said, you know, forging connections where we can travel around and share these skills. And, and I want to point out Neil, who's in this call, who was in the spring gathering, but not the fall gathering. And he's an excellent example of someone who's so engaged in these skills and a peer mentor in that he has 
huge experience in hide tanning and was, and I don't, I don't think that you guys ever did get together, but was like actively planning get togethers with people from the spring gathering, getting together, tanning hides and, and moving forward in person as well as virtually through this. And Neil, did, did you guys ever end up getting together in person? It was you and Quentin, right? We have not yet. Um, I guess I'm going to wait till we get the vaccines going a bit. So I feel more comfortable for me and my family. And um, so I'm hoping so. But yeah, it's, I've been like way, way into it since we last talked. I mean, there's, I'm covered up in hides and it's <laughs> just nuts. I'll, I'll get back with you. Thank you. This meant so much. Oh, Thank you. Yay. Um, oh, you're I'll, I'll get back with you. I've, I've got to get some stuff cleaned up i've gotten mess around here you wouldn't believe <laughs> but i'll tell you more about it that's how it is when you get into these skills for sure alice just handed off a bunch of reeds to me today now i've got all kinds of great plant material in my car we were there to harvest willow and i came home with rose stalks and reeds for arrows and that's what it looks like yeah get get used to a little bit yeah. of creative chaos <laughs> yeah it's it's very much been that way here lately Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, but I'll share more about that later. But uh, yeah, I'm picking up a lot of new stuff and I have been trying to mentor some people in another group. So that's helping me with um, paying attention to what I'm doing and also how to convey that to other people. So anyway, thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so I just want to make sure that everyone recognizes that like it's not all beginners in this community all kinds of people with all kinds of experience all across the spectrum are drawn to these gatherings in this community because doing it in a group is so wonderful for everyone. It's wonderful for the beginners. It's wonderful for the people somewhere in the middle of their track to have other folks, you know, to mentor them and to mentor others. We learn so much more and then even experts. So, so yeah, there's something for everyone in this gathering and in this community. And it's just my huge pleasure to get to be, be the impetus for it and see the ways it's been unfolding and all of the lives it's affected. Um, Alice, I saw you had your hand up there. And Neil, I'm so excited to have you back with us. <laughs> so Thank here's so one much. for Neil. You, it, you might be a practicing primitive if it takes one truck to move your stuff and five trucks to move your sticks and rocks. <laughs> it's true, yes. Yeah, my, my sweetheart was laughing at me this fall because I was like a chipmunk. I could not leave the house without coming back with pockets full of acorn. And he was like, what? Like you have so many acorns. How do you even store this? And I said, you know what? It's not even, it doesn't even matter to me whether or not I eat all of those, but it feels so good to me to do it. It's like something in my DNA is asking for me to pay attention and bring something home and make it a part of my life. And, 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 you know, the more you engage these skills, the more what Alice, you, you end up having, you know, a pile of this over there and you're seeing more things because you know, you can use this thing for that, but Hey, this is growing next to it. And I bet that can be used for something. And it just kind of snowballs and really changes your life. <laughs> uh, well, so we're like already almost at the hour. And I said there was going to be time for questions, but it's just been so fun to share that we haven't, we haven't had much down space. But before we close, I do want to give space for questions that folks might have about you know, content or logistics or whatever, whatever's up for you around the gathering itself. Um, you can go ahead and raise your hand or put a question in the chat and I will do my best to address those without having this call stretch too horribly long after the hour. And maybe we've all blabbed enough that there aren't questions. We'll see. Uh, Francesca, I see your hand up there. I, it, it's a bit of a cheat. I don't really have a question. I just want to speak into feeling like I've found my people and that, you know, my, my nickname was roadkill when I was 15. And <laughs> I, I, li I live in a camper. I'm surrounded by wild boars. I've lived this my whole life and have been kind of exiled from it and, you know, exiled from the world. And so I'm just so, uh, I feel like I found my people and I'm grateful for the pandemic for this 
because I feel like the pandemic says this is what matters. We, this is what matters. This is what matters. And so I'm so grateful to be here with you and with all of you because it's like, I matter, this matters. So Thank I you. just, yeah. just weighing in with my appreciation and that um, I'm just grateful to have found my people and that I have access to them, you know, because living remotely with hardly any money under the poverty line, I don't get to travel around. So this is like, oh, good. Um, you know, it isn't for the elite. It's for, <laughs> you know, anyway, I just, just that this is what matters. Yeah. Yeah, you hit it on the head. It's absolutely true. And that, again, is why even though, you know, my entire adult life up until this point, I had only taught these things in person, I recognize that that's just a teeny little sliver of people who are able to get to them that way. But when you bring them to everyone in their own living room, all of a sudden, the world gets to engage. And that brings me to an important point too about this gathering and all of the classes, but that I do offer scholarships, two different types of scholarships. Um, inclusion scholarships, specifically for those, those communities that have historically had less access to some of this stuff. So, um, so BIPOC communities, so black and indigenous people of color who, you know, through, through a lot of forces at work in our society often um, have not had the kinds of access to the outdoors, to skills, don't necessarily feel comfortable coming to gatherings, which have traditionally been fairly white dominated, fairly older white male dominated. So really trying to actively address that and, and bring in more people with inclusion scholarships and then also scholarships based on financial need. So the idea being that, you know, the more people who are able to attend these gatherings and pay for them and contribute to the scholarship fund, also the more we are able to spread them so that all people have access. And that's a thing about offering them online is most people these days have access to, even if it be, you know, in a public place with with a public computer or their phone it's a way to reach people and really spread the access to something that really is a human birthright and something that makes all people just feel innately more well somehow right because these skills are in our dna there's a part of us that feels really drawn to them a, a friend of mine had a theory about why people hoarded toilet paper at the start of covid was was that animal instinct to gather something you know, like that, that squirrel in the fall gathering its, its nuts, but we are so divorced from what we actually need that people took that ancestral DNA and put it towards toilet paper rather than the other resources that were actually more supportive to life. But so we're trying to, we're trying to teach people what actually is important so we can put the energy towards that, but that instinct played out big time in our society last spring, right? <laughs> Um, hi, Janie. Welcome so much. Lovely to have you. I've talked about you in this gathering because so many folks have been engaged with fish leather tanning, and so your name has been up a lot. So lovely to see you. Look at Alice's mouth right now. It's, it's a gog. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Janie, so much. You don't know what you've done for us. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. I'm so sorry I'm late. And I'm just glad I could come in maybe at the tail end, but I'm glad I could join anyway. So great to see all your faces. Yay. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Um, luckily we're still on. We're, we're probably wrapping soon, but glad that you, glad you managed to come on and see a lot of the faces and meet some of the cast of characters. Um, yeah. So other questions? <clears throat> So I should say too that that link that I put in the chat is the is the link that'll bring you to the web page, which of course is going to have a lot more details and answer a lot more questions. And then as we get closer to the gathering, everybody who's registered is going to be getting more emails. And then if you're on my mailing list, which all of you, if you've been, you know, part of either Patreon or the classes are on the mailing list, you're going to be starting to get emails with more specifics, um, kind of. Each week between now and the gathering, I'll be unpacking one of the tracks, the theme tracks, and talking a little bit more about that. So you'd have to try not to get more information about the gathering at this point. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, 
If there aren't any further questions, then we can go ahead and wrap now. But just so you all know, the announcement to the larger group is gonna go out on Monday. So you will be getting an email um, to the to my full mailing list. So it'll be a little bit of repeat for you. But, and then it's going to be open to the general public. I'll be announcing it social media and elsewhere um, starting Monday. So this is kind of the gap that's just for those who are either on my Patreon team. Thank you so much to those of you who are on my Patreon team. It makes such a difference. Um, and those of you who have been in my courses before, this is your special window where it's just you invited. Oh, and there's Alice's salmon skin <laughs> to share. Yay. Yeah. So any parting, parting words or comments before we prepare to kind of close with intention as a group? All right, well, I'm going to do a practice that is a regular thing in these calls, which is about getting kind of pulling ourselves back from all of our consciousness forward and into the screen and in our eyes rather than in our own bodies and in our own senses. And I like to end every call by inviting you to find your way back into your body. And ideally that's gonna look like your bum seated squarely on whatever you're sitting on. For me, it's a very low stool just above the ground. And if you're in a chair, your feet planted firmly on the ground. And I always like to roll my shoulders back. We try to just kind of be aware of and counter some of those ills of being a modern human, right? Which is like all of our attention ahead of us and out of our own body and focused on screens and just reminding ourselves that we are an animal too. And we have an animal body that needs to be tended to and reminded that it exists. And starting to just bring our consciousness into some of those senses that we often don't really let ourselves experience. So I invite you to take a nice breath and notice if there's any scent in the air that you maybe have been smelling for a long time but weren't aware of because you didn't focus any attention on it. And can you put your attention to somewhere on your body that your clothes are touching in a way that makes you aware of it? So I'm wearing buckskin pants right now and they, the folds I can really feel. So I can feel a spot where a fold in my buckskin is pressing against the back of my left knee. And if you can open up your ears right now, I'm sitting inside. So what I mostly hear is the hum of the refrigerator. <laughs> but if you can let yourself drop deeper and pick out some of the quiet sounds a little bit further off, further from the, the louder sounds right in your immediate field. And just start that practice of drawing your consciousness into those senses, reminding yourself that you have those senses for a reason. And the more you drop into those senses, the more present you are in every moment. As we drop into our bodies, we're experiencing the world around us rather than living through our to-do list or our playlist or that show that you watched last night. And this is one of the most important ancestral skills, just being present and reminding ourselves that we have a lot of ways to be in tune with the world around us and that it makes a difference to use all of those different ways, all of those different senses. So I'd love to invite everyone because everyone here is here because they have at least some inkling of interest in the skills gathering. I'd love for you to think about one thing that you would either like to learn about for the first time or a thing that you're interested in learning that you'd like to take a little bit deeper. Think about that thing and just kind of hold it in your awareness as we do a couple nice deep breaths as a group. So go ahead and inhale. And as you exhale, picture that thing, that skill or practice or craft. 
We'll take two more deep breaths. Exhaling. One more nice inhale. And exhaling together. I always feel like the more we are able to hold something in mind as we come together as a group, the more we are helping solidify that vision or those intentions for one another. It's not just us holding that thing, it's a group field holding it. And that is a powerful thing. So thank you all. And I certainly hope to get to share the spring online skills gathering with you. And if this isn't a good fit for you this year, I hope that you continue to be engaged with the Buckskin Revolution community in some way. Um, and just a reminder that, that it, is, it is something that we are building from the ground up. It's only been a year and it's already become such an amazing thing. So it is a resource for you to tune back in with if now isn't the time for you. But um, but I feel a lot of enthusiasm in this group and I, and I, have, a, I have a suspicion I'm going to be seeing all of you soon. <laughs> so I certainly hope so. So thank you so much. And um, you have the link and I will be emailing you the link to this recording um, as well as the link to the gathering. And um, reminder for those of you who are Patreon members that I am going to be sending you a special code. So if you are a buckskin revolutionary or a buckskin pillar, you're going to be getting a discount that's more than the early bird discount. If you're a buckskin um, supporter or believer, then the early bird discount is your best discount. So you might as well go for that. And then if you miss that period, you can just send me a personal message and I'll make you a code to register later, but definitely encourage you to register on the sooner. Um, so yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Lovely to see you all. And I look forward to more connecting in the future. Thank you, Onea. Yeah, lovely to see you, Neil. Great. Later, everyone. Bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you.